Hey everybody, my name is Jerry, and I'm glad you could join me. We're talking about the 2017 through 2019 Suzuki GSXR 1000, the 1000 ABS, and the one just a regular 1000. I'm going to show you how an easy little trick to put coolant into this bike. A lot of people struggle getting coolant into the bike because of where the, the filler bottle is. It's really difficult to get to. But I'm going to give you a little trick on how to put coolant in. Really, really simple. Really, really easy. And also, I want to remind everybody, we have a $100 contest giveaway going on right now. This is the Yoshimura ABS Elite Kit. Just my way of giving back to the community. You're going to see a link in the description just below this video. Click on the link. Go over there, all you gotta do is answer one question, put in an email address, and, and maybe at the end of the year when I reach my 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a random drawing on the subscribers, and then I'll mail this out to one lucky subscriber. And uh, pretty cool, right guys? A lucky subscriber's gonna get $100 with the ABS Delete Kit. I think that's pretty cool. You know, uh, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and do this coolant fill, just to top off the coolant, because I know that my coolant was a little bit low, so I went ahead and did it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And also, we take the bike out for a little ride, and we might even go to a ghost town. You know, we're almost at the point where I'm gonna upshift. It's coming. We're almost at the point where I'm gonna upshift during a wheelie. Because I'm almost there. Alright guys, here it is. I'm going to show you a very easy way to put uh, coolant into your 2017 through 2019 Suzuki GSX-R 1000, the 1000R, 1000 ABS. They're all the same, okay? You don't even have to take off the any body panel work. You don't have to get even the little panel on the in, um, under the front end on the inside. You don't have to take that off either. So one, there's three different things you could do. They're all basically on the, based on the same premise, okay? So anyway, but first let me just tell you real quick, I noticed I was low on coolant uh, on my 2017 Suzuki GSX-R1000R, so I ordered the X-Star Super Long Life Coolant. This is a 50-50 mix, okay? 50-50 pre-diluted antifreeze and engine coolant, all right? So what you're gonna do is get yourself, the, the best bottle to get would be what we call a wash bottle. A wash bottle, is about half the size of this. It's used a lot in um, in like uh, chemical labs or industries that use like acetone. It's basically a little bottle has a cap on the top and it has like a, has a straw that comes up and then hooks like that. Okay. So if you want to get one online, just look for wash bottle. It'll have a, 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 a straw that comes up, a stiff straw that comes up, and it hooks. Those are perfect. For what we're about to do and add coolant to the to the motorcycle okay the other kind of bottle you can use is like an athlete's bottle like you see in football games or even in some automotive sports like endurance motorcycle racing nascar any, any, you know indy car formula one anywhere where you see the athletes wearing a helmet okay you'll notice in football games that they're wearing a helmet so someone will assist them by coming up with a water bottle has a flexible like 90 degree straw on it, right? And they just squeeze the bottle and out squirts their drink. And that also will work really good for adding coolant to this motorcycle. Okay, well I couldn't find either one of those locally. I didn't want to wait for, um, wait to order one online. So I went to my local dollar store. Sure enough, this bottle literally cost me a dollar. Okay, now I know a lot of you won't have this laying around. I happen to have some very flexible hose laying around. Um, so this is one thing you could do if you could get some flexible hose. You might be able to get this really, this is really flexible. See how it's really flimsy? Super flimsy. If you can get some flexible hose, you know, local, then great, that'll work. I had some uh, laying around in a bucket that I use for some other stuff that I do. And I just forced it over the nozzle on this spray bottle. Okay, guys. Hopefully you can see this. Just over the front fender on the rear part of the bike. I'm in the very front of the bike. You can see that one of the front shocks. We're looking at the coolant level. Now if you, you'll see a, a, like a white vertical strip going up and down just to the left of the radiator and it's kind of black and then you see a white strip going up and down, right? That's the coolant level reader. I'm going shake to the, shake the bike. You see the coolant moving around in there? See it? First you guys can see it now. 
And right now mine's reading. See it shaking around in there? Mine's reading right on the low line. Okay, you can see I've got the handlebars turned all the way to the left here. I got a flashlight sitting on top of it. Ignore that. So I've got the handlebars turned all the way to the left, right? Towards the clutch side. Now we're talking about adding some coolant to the bike. Now I'm going to zoom in. You see that white plastic bottle right in the middle of the frame? Yeah, there's an overflow plus fill bottle sitting right there underneath the inlet. The air box inlet. These are inlets that let air in from the front of the motorcycle, okay? But underneath that on the on the uh, throttle side of the bike, that's where you put your coolant in. Now you you can you see that little silver piece right in the middle of the frame? That's actually the radiator cap. We're only seeing a small, small side of it right here. Right there in the middle. That white plastic bottle holds coolant. That's the same bottle we were looking at when we were underneath the bike and we saw it was hitting the low line. Okay, so I'm gonna walk around the other side of the bike and show you something really cool, cool little trick. You don't have to remove any body work at all to get to this. But what you're gonna do at this point is, okay, you're gonna reach down with your left hand right here, right by the fork, right by the throttle. You're gonna reach down, okay, and you go underneath there and you're gonna feel that bottle. You can feel it in there, okay? You gotta feel it by hand. You can look over, okay, and you can see that white bottle right there, right? See it? So you're going to feel for that bottle, okay? So you get down there with your hand, just feel for it. You'll feel it down in there. And then what you're going to feel is, to the left, that way, you're going to feel the radiator cap, the metal one, and to the right, you're going to feel a little plastic cap, okay? And you're going to pull that cap out. And I already did. It looks like that right there. Now you have to bend it a little bit and get it out, but it'll, it will come out. There it is right there, okay? That's what it looks like. It's just rubber. See how it gives? It's rubber. All right? Keep it clean. Don't, don't put it down like that and make it all dirty, so keep it clean. Okay, maybe give it a little wipe before you put it back in there. So Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you're going to put coolant in there. Because you would think right now, oh, there's no way I can get coolant in there. How could you possibly get any coolant in there? Well, I'm going to talk to you about a little trick. I'm going to show you how we do that, okay? All right, so you remember earlier we talked about having this uh, bottle, little spray bottle, right at the kitchen sink just to make sure it would work. So now all we're going to do, very simple guys, going to take the super long life coolant from X-Star. We're going to fill this bottle about, you know, I'm only going to put about, uh, you know, not even halfway in this bottle because we're not going to need that much to, to top off the coolant on the motorcycle. Okay, so you see a little funnel, I'm gonna pour some in there and then we're gonna go over the bike. One thing I wanna make absolutely certain that you understand is do not overfill the coolant bottle on the motorcycle. That's a big no-no. So stay below the full line. All right, so let me put a little coolant here and then we'll go over to the bike. Okay, so you can see I've got the spray bottle here. I got a little bit of coolant that I poured in the, bo in the bottom and now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna actually put it in the bike. Just a quick note guys, this stuff is nasty. Don't get it on your hands, don't get it in your eyes. Okay, definitely don't taste it. Don't even smell it. You don't want you don't want it around kids or pets. Okay, don't let it get on your garage floor. If you do, wipe it up right away. Nasty stuff, right? Okay, so let me set up and then I'll show you how to put it in the bike. Okay, can you see that, guys? Just above the back of the flashlight, right there, just to the right of the fork and above the flashlight, that's the hose going into the water bottle, going into the coolant bottle. Okay, that's it right there. Let's see if I can get the flashlight out there and get a little bit a little better view here. See if this is better. So okay, you got the spray bottle just sitting right there on the ground. Now I'm just gonna boom, 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 pump it up and fill up. Now check it, keep going to the other side of the bike and check the fluid level, make sure you don't get above the full line. So you're just gonna pump a little bit in there, make sure it's pushing in there, and then go to the other side of the bike and check it. So one thing I just wanted to show real quick, you see how the fluid's already making its way up there? Because I know some of you are gonna say, that ain't gonna work. Well, there it is. Now watch, I'm gonna pump the handle, watch as it continues to push up. See it? Going up, just keep squeezing the handle and it'll keep pushing it up there. Eventually go into the, into the tank, right? Okay. Now when you're done, of course, you're gonna have some, some coolant still sitting in the bottle. I just have it sitting up there being held up against the wall. I just wanted to show you. When you take the, the uh, hose out of the little filler tube in the motorcycle, just keep your bottle below the top of the hose and it won't you won't leak. 
what I did is I just pinched the top very, as you're pulling the very end of the hose out of the, the filler bottle on the bike, a little bit of the end will drain out into the bottle and you'll have that little bit of space like that. Just pinch off the end and just make sure you keep that, this part of the hose, the end of the hose, higher than your bottle on the ground and you should be good to go. Now all I'm gonna do right now is put that funnel back into there, take that hose, drain it back into the, into the bottle, right? And unscrew the cap right here on that, let a little air in there and it'll clear out the hose, okay? All right, now that we've got the coolant filled up on the motorcycle and I verified it by going over to the other side of the bike and looking at it underneath the bike like we did originally and I'm right at the full line so that's okay I wish I would have kept a little bit lower as long as you don't go over the full line you're good now we're gonna put this rubber uh, cap back onto the the, the filler uh, bottle on the bike now you what you're gonna notice on this let me see if I can get a shot of it let's see see where it says hose the little arrow well, there's a little overfill or, yeah, overfill hose. Or if your bike gets too hot and it pushes up the radiator cap, there's radiator caps are pressurized and if they reach a maximum pressure and exceeds it, the coolant's gotta go somewhere and it'll go into the, um, what we call an overfill hose, okay? Basically a blow-by hose and the coolant would be sprayed out actually onto the road in this case, which is pretty nasty, but that's kind of last resort. Anyway. This little hose and arrow on this filler cap has to be pointed right where the hose is on the bike. Now the hose is pointed, if you put your hand down there, you'll feel a hose next to the cap. It's pointed to the front of the motorcycle. So we want this arrow, when we put the cap on, to go to the front of the bike. You follow me? And why is that? Why do they want that? Let's take a look at this cap. I'll tell you why. See all the little grooves in the cap? On the stem of the cap. Yeah, Suzuki knows what they're doing, guys. Look at this. This is actually a network route. And it routes the coolant to the hose in case the bike overheats. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, they got it going on with this with this cap. Alright, so make sure you take this hose, this cap I mean, and when you put it back on the filler, filler hole and you push it in, that this arrow it's pointed to wherever the hose is, and on my bike it's pointed to the front of the motorcycle, okay? You just gotta get down there, feel it with your hand, and figure out what the hose is. I'm pretty sure um, the 2017 through 19, the configuration is the same, so just make sure this is pointing to the front of the motorcycle. Now some of you, some of you are gonna say, oh, I can't, I can't get to it, I can't get to it. I can't get the filler cap off. Okay, in that case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take off this panel right here. Okay, and what I'm showing you, the first thing I'm showing you is, there's a little buttonhole right there, see it? That is where one of the little button tabs go. Okay, you gotta pull that one out. Now the key to get these out, guys, is very simple. You first push in with a little small screwdriver right in the middle of the button. Okay, you hear a little pop, and then you just use the same flathead screwdriver to pull the whole outside part of the tab out, and it'll slide right out. Don't just try to pull it out. You gotta push the middle of the button in first makes them really easy to come off. Okay, so that's where one of them is. Total of four buttons you gotta take off. But again, just push in on the, in the inner part of the button and then to pull it from the outside, it comes right out. So putting it back on is pretty simple. One, two, uh, three button down here and four button right up in here, right? One, two, three, and four. And there's some little, like, kind of little insert clips along the way, just make sure it's Make sure it's nice and smooth, like the edges are nice and smooth and you know you got the panel in there right. Alright, so I just want to show you one of these buttons. A lot of people don't do this properly. See how that button's pushed in in the middle? That's what you want. Okay. Just take yourself a little small screwdriver and push the middle of the button in first and then you pull it from the edge out. Okay. See that? And then before you put them back in, you want the button to be like that. You want the button to be sticking back out. So make sure before you put them back in there, you just give them a little push like that from the bottom. And then the button's sticking out. That allows you to push them in, and then the last thing you do is you push that center, center piece in, and they'll snap in place, okay? Okay, so that's the panel that I just took off. For those of you that want to take the panel off, that's the little panel, okay, from the inside. And let me see if I get a shot here. Okay, so there's the bottle, right? That's the bottle right there. 
okay? And you can see I'm pretty full. The fill, fill line is right there, the, the full line is right there, so I'm right, right up on it, okay? And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a shot of the cap just because of the angle here and the light is a little off, but yeah, it's hard to see that cap up in there, but it's, the black cap is up there, okay? So for those of you that wanna do it this way, you can take the panel off and get access to the bottle a little bit easier. And that bottle has a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of a little bit of movement in it, not much. And for some people, that makes it easier to put the cap back on and take it off. So, me, I prefer not to go through all the taking the panel off. Uh, but if you are having a hard time getting a, the black cap back on the top of that that fill bottle, then just take the panel off. It should make it a little easier. Okay, let me just check the odometer because we got about. Uh, 11 miles. I just reset the odometer. If you want to know how to, I mean, the trip. If you want to know how to reset the trip, guys, you just press down on the left handlebar control and just hold it for like two seconds. And that'll reset your trip. So just make sure trip A or B is showing up on your dashboard and then just press down for two seconds and you reset your trip. It's very convenient. So I know how many miles it is from that turnoff to where I'm to the ghost town and I can just watch it. Have a great time today. We're going to talk about the history of the ghost town and uh, I'll reveal the name when we get there. Trying to find a place of road where the wind's covered by tr some trees and, and blocking the wind a little bit so I can do a couple wheelies. <laughs> Loving that one. So that's the Knoxville Cemetery, and we are approaching the ghost town. So now you know the name of the town. That's Knoxville Cemetery, which we still got a little ways to go until we get to the town, but. Um, which ain't much of a town But that's where we're headed. That's a ghost town Knoxville, Texas guys N-O-X V-I-L-L-E All right, here we are. We're, we're arrived at the ghost town. So you look to my right there That's an old leftover part of the ghost town right there guys pretty cool. So we're gonna see if we can get in there And uh, check this out. I don't know if we can because you know sports bike isn't very good about going in the dirt So this may not go too well uh, Let me get off the front brake and trailer rear brake here a little bit and uh, let's see what we get. There goes a white tail. This is a white tail, guys. See the white tail? Camera's picking up the white tail. That's a doe. There's a, oh, there's another white tail over there. See it right there, guys? Uh, I think the camera can pick it up right there. You see the white tail? She's looking at me. She's flipping her tail. That's a little bit of a warning sign. Got her tail up in the air, going across the, the road right now. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> We got white tail all over the place. In this part of Texas, they're everywhere. Okay, let's go check out this ghost town, guys. Now, this is private property. So, I'm really not supposed to be here. So, we're going to make this trip really quick. Because in Texas, guys, we don't play around with private property and trespass. And that's a big no-no out here. So, uh, uh, kind of breaking the rules here a little bit just to show you this, this old part of the ghost town. Now, I'm not sure if this building was a post office or what have you okay let me see if I can find a place to get the kickstand down so the bike won't fall over that might be a little more challenging than than I thought it's a little bit of a rock right here I think I might be able to put the kickstand down right there let's see what we get here back it up a little bit this bike is starting to get hot okay I think we're good Okay, all right guys. So this is part of the ghost town, for, don't, never mind the shack in the back, and obviously they dumped some stuff back there. Um, I know this camera, this, this little bullet camera isn't the best camera for doing this, but uh, I didn't want to carry all my gear today, so forgive me for that. But let me just read you a little bit of history about this ghost town. This is Knoxville, Texas, and you can see a windmill right over there. And windmills aren't just for looks, guys, they actually pump water from a well up into a water reservoir for cattle for livestock that's why you have those kind of windmills okay so let's take a look at the history of this town there are other buildings uh, back over here to the right but i'm not going to go back there because like i said this is private property we're going to make this quick um so i got my little cheat sheet here for knoxville texas so uh let's see so Knoxville had a first resident. His name was Creed Taylor. 
And he built a stone house in 1869. That's obviously not this one. And then in, uh, other, other settlers came in in the 1870s to settle nearby about, about four or five miles east of here. And um, in 1879, a storekeeper named Knox, and I know where the town's name got its name, opened up a town's post office. I'm not sure if this was the post office or not, but it might have been. Uh, there was a Knoxville school in 1880, and it was the first stone school in this county. This county is called Kimball County. And then in 1940, um, the school merged with Harper. Harper's a little bit uh, east of here. We went through Harper on the way here. In 1911, the post office was moved to moved west to James River. And by the 1920s, the town had a store and a gas station, and the post office unfortunately closed in 1942, basically right around the height or... Uh, the, you know, going into World War II, right? Uh, the population was 15 or less in 1974, guys, and then suddenly it jumped to 75. But by 1990, the population was only three. So a bona fide ghost town right here in south central Texas. And, uh, boy, it is hot today. I'm feeling it. So um, I'm just going to take a quick, 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 quick walk around this, this other side here. And, uh, yep, there it is, guys, Post Office Express, 1921 to 1942. Now, this is closed. Uh, right now, it's not manned, so I can't go inside. Uh, there's a little pin on the door. This is probably, it may be government-owned property, but anytime you see fences, guys, we try not to go on that property. But just a real, real quick look here. Um, so there it is, man. This is the po old post office. Um, it looks like it was... Um, rebuilt into wood at some point because um, the original one uh, down by the cemetery a few miles back was stone I believe um, they got an old ram skull I don't know if you can see it right there that's a ram yeah, it might be a mule deer I'm not even sure to be honest with you basically a ram you got another skull right here uh, that's how they do it this, this probably might have uh, might have become a um, tourist attraction at one point before it finally just uh, got too old. So pretty cool, guys. That's Knoxville, Texas. Um, there's a um, there's a, some buildings over there. I'm not going to go over there right now. Um, but yeah, Knoxville, Texas, a ghost town in Texas. Um, pretty cool. We got to see some whitetail out here. And this is actually pecan territory, I believe. A lot of pecans are grown out here. So, um, Texas is known for their pecans. Okay, very cool. On a hot day, we got to check out a little ghost town. Pretty neat stuff. <laughs> okay. If we get to drinking on Friday and I ask you to stay till Monday, I don't really mean it. <laughs> uh, James River School District number five. Yeah, Tom and Bell Phillips. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Post Office Express 1921 to 1942. Unfortunately, it looks like the war, World War II, had an impact on Knoxville. Okay. Neat, neat, neat. Really, really cool. Um, there's not much uh, evidence left of Knoxville, Texas. This is just uh, one of the few observable, uh, I guess I call it a bit of a relic, to let you know there once was something here. And, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Now, here you go. You got a Texan, old Texan couple with their dog going down to the river. How you doing today, sir? Are you serious? Back in the day or recently? I was just visiting the, Knox, the old Knoxville Cemetery, I mean, uh, post office. Yeah, there's two of them.
All right, some cool people right there, some Texans up, came down from Mason. And uh, so you can check out on the map, guys, where Mason is, where Knoxville is, and you'll have an idea of, uh, of where we're at here. Vulture flying over my head, <laughs> little pecker head, man. Vulture checking me out, guys. Flying right over my head. Yeah, I see you too, buddy. <laughs> Friggin' vulture. Bastard. Man, a dog on wind. If I could just get a good strip of road with no wind. There was a little bit. You guys see that? <laughs> that was a little bit wild into the wind. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay. So I couldn't I couldn't manage the throttle properly in that wind. And the bike was leaning up a storm, man. It was leaning in the wind like that. I'm like, ah! Okay. And uh, I had to touch the rear brake just to get things settled down. So, unfortunately, the wind today. But all right, that was my first upshift. And I actually able, I was able to uh, keep the bike going a little bit. That friggin' wind. <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. I had an awesome day. Oh my gosh, it was so hot today. 107 degree index here in South Central Texas. Whew, can somebody say hot? I hope you guys really enjoyed that ghost town. Uh, we have some more coming up. I'm gonna go to another ghost town, hopefully here in the near future, and I'll, I'll talk about that when it comes up. I wanna remind everybody that we have a $100 prize giveaway contest going on. So you'll see the link a link just below this video, just click on the link, go there, you just gotta answer one question, put your email address in, and you'll be entered, automatically entered into a drawing. This is a Yoshimira ABS to lead kit for the 2017 through 2019 Suzuki GSXR 1000R and also the 1000 ABS, because they both have ABS, okay? So one lucky subscriber is gonna get this probably near the end of the year when I hit my 1000 subscriber. Well, of course, it could be sooner if you guys help me out. But anyway, that's just my way of giving back to the community. I had a great time today, guys. Oh, my gosh. It was so windy out, and I tried to do an upshift in the middle of a wheelie. I kind of got it going, so uh, that's going to keep getting better and better. I'm really excited about that. I actually got a lot of extra footage, and I think I'm going to talk about how I approach corners coming up real soon and lean angle. And I watched a video recently of a guy talk about he was advocating that we should be trail braking with the front brake in the middle of a corner on the streets. I mean, guys, I gotta tell you, some of the things I hear on the internet about people uh, on motorcycles, it's just crazy. So uh, I don't agree with that at all. I'm gonna show you how I do it in a video coming up in the near future. I'm gonna use some of the footage from today because I really went out and did some great riding today. Wow, what an amazing, amazing day. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video today. And listen, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag right there. On over my head, you're going to see a, video, a playlist of all the videos on this motorcycle. And listen, guys, make sure you log in, subscribe, and click that little bell. That little That's the way YouTube does, thing, does things nowadays. You click the bell, you'll be notified of all the videos when I put them out. Until next time, guys, we'll see you right back here again real soon.